your family and the people around you reacted to your conversion, reversion to Islam? It was um, extremely, extremely difficult. But in that difficulty was the ease at the same time. I didn't recognize it because they completely cut me off. I had no choice but to rely on Allah because my marriage as a result became very difficult as well. Having children on my own was a difficulty in itself. Every point of my life was difficult without my family because I was very close to them and I loved them a lot. There are times where I want to hit my head against the wall just so I could sleep because when you're that hurt, you can't switch off and you, you play things in your head over and over again. Everything that I looked at, I saw my mom and dad first, my family, everything. If I went to the supermarket, I would remember going to the supermarket with my dad on the weekends and doing grocery shopping. If I heard like a song in Asda, I remember dancing with my sister to that song. You know, if I saw like, you know, a program on TV, I remember watching it with my brother. Everything. If I had like difficulty in my marriage, I wanted to run to my family. I couldn't. I, I would literally go and sit in the car outside on my own. So it was really, really hard. Very difficult to live a life without your family. It's very hard. It's still hard now. Sometimes I think to myself, why am I still Muslim? You know, because sometimes you go through so many tests. Like I said, there's always that thought in my mind that, you know, my family is there. They're an hour away from me. Why am I still living like this when I'm struggling on my own, when I'm like struggling with the kids or financially or whatever? Why am I still here? And that, I think, is what keeps me going. Because just as an example, I went through a divorce. It was very, very horrible, very difficult. And in that time, I was alone. I And I was very, I'll be honest with you, I was struggling to stay alive. I didn't know if I wanted to be alive. There were so many issues that I was dealing with at that time. And at that time, I went to see my auntie. I didn't plan it. It just sort of happened. I just turned up at her doorstep. And for the first time in 10 years, someone from my family showed me love. She was amazing. She made me tea. She sat with me and she said, are you all right? Just that. Are you okay? And that's my auntie. That was the first time family member asked me, are you okay? And she said, what are you going to do? Have you got a plan? Because I had nothing. And all I had was my three children. And by Allah, I didn't want to leave her house. And I sat there and I thought, oh, gosh, what if I just hide my Islam? And my Islam just in my heart. But what if I just come back home? Because they love me and I wanted to stay. I didn't want to leave her house. I wanted to stay in her house. I wanted to give up everything, not my deen. I thought I could hide that. I'll just pray upstairs when no one's looking. And I wanted to go back home. Allah, my grandma, who hadn't seen me in 10 years, very, very elderly, she came out from the room and she would have seen me. And my auntie said to me, go quickly, run out the house. And she forced me to run out the house. Back door, back gate, run. And I had to run out the house. There was no goodbye, nothing. I ran out the house. I got into my car. My, my first reaction, I've got nothing. I've got nobody. The first thing I And then I thought, how long am I going to do this? How long will I look to other people to rescue me when Allah says himself, come to me, come to me, remember me, I will remember you. Your connection with Allah is direct. And so I sat in the car and I read Ayatul Kursi. I read the three calls and I begged Allah, Ya Allah, just keep me in the deen. I begged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that moment, keep me in the deen, keep me in the deen. Whatever happens to me, it doesn't matter. Just let me die Muslim. There are, there are other examples I can say to you, and honestly, on camera, I'll say to you, there are times where I wanted to harm myself. An example, An example I, will, I remember being in my bathroom, and I was looking at my face, and I hated it, and I wanted to harm myself. Worst anyway, thing and then I heard a voice, like, in my head saying, look out the window. I looked out the window, and I saw the sky. And I ran downstairs and I opened my doors and I went into the garden and I looked up at the sky and I looked up at the heavens because I remember the ayah in the Qur Quran, I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that for those who believe, they just have to look up at the sky and it's a sign for them. And I dropped on my knees, begged Allah, Ya Allah, keep me in the deen. This is, this is freedom, this is contentment where you don't need to rely on anyone else. You don't need anybody else. You need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life. And that's what I did. And so I haven't harmed myself because I have Allah. So, and so I did that. And I think that was, again, another pivotal moment where I knew, where yes, I knew I'm, yes, I'm Muslim. Because the shaitan will come to you so many times and question your Islam, make you question your Islam. Am I Muslim? Who am I Muslim for? Why am I Muslim? What do I even like about Islam? The shaitan will come to you when you're really weak and low. 
shaitan comes to you. And so all the nine, ten years I had of just learning the deen came back to me in that moment. So this is, so one, this is one of the things that I say to children who don't understand, they don't feel the spiritual side of Islam because they're young and life's great. I say to them, still learn because you don't know the moment you're going to drop or everything that you learn and you didn't know why you were learning is going to come back to you and it's going to rescue you, it's going to save your life. So when your mom tells you go to madrasa, when your mom tells you go and go to your Islamic studies lesson, go. And for reverts, learn. You can't just become Muslims out of believing that. No, go and learn, study the deen, study it hard, study it every day, even if it's a little bit, because when you drop, the shaitan's going to come to you and try and take you away. And then all of your learning, all of a sudden, it's going to hit you and it's going to save you. And it saved me that day. I think there are moments where I was trying to defend Islam and try to defend my decision and I probably would spoke over my mom and maybe I was shouting at one point and that I regret because Allah SWT says in the Quran, you know, you treat your parents with the utmost respect. As Muslims, we understand and we understand the stories of the companions that also had to do the same to their family and leave their family. We understand that the Prophet Muhammad SAW had to tell his uncles that, look, you know, I'm going to live a different way. What we, what we learn is that they are human and they're entitled to their feelings. And now I don't hold anything against them. If anything, I would say to you, my mother is still my role model. She's still the person that I love more than anyone else in this world. Just as the Prophet Muhammad SAW loved his uncle who was not Muslim and cried for his uncle and did everything for him, I, I feel the same for my mum. She is an amazing woman. She's entitled to her feelings. I did hurt her and I will apologize till the day I die to my mum.